Hey, two laps to go. Two laps. Can effectively. Oh, there goes Jordan. We talked about that big hole. Those two cars lead. Now Jordan just slips right through where they're running side by side. Leaves a big hole and they just slip right up to the lead. Now the key is where do I want to place myself for this final lap? Probably not the lead. And the problem hurt us, Scott. He's now got Tracy and Tagliani keeping him from this lead group. I think he's fallen out of it. He's too far back. Just remember, they're going to be able to draft past you, so let them have it. Where do you want to be, Paul? What's um, the answer to the biggest question of the 500 mile? I'm thinking right now I want to be in second. Tagliani's going to figure into this finish as he runs up there with everybody else. Last lap. Oh! They touched! Oh, that one was close. So Tagliani comes up there. Oh, 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 Man, oh, oh, oh. almost slid up into Franchitti now. But it's it, the two teammates helping each other. And it may be Carpentier looking for his first ever win. Carpentier at the line. Patrick Carpentier takes his first victory. Wow, that was awesome. Oh, that's the way to do it, Patrick. The French the Canadian with an year. Everyone wondered what will happen to Reynard Parts. Will the development stop? Will the chassis be a worthy opponent for the Lola? We're down to four Reynard chassis to in the series. As the white flag waves over Patrick Carpentier, one of them, make that two of them in the hands of Jerry Forsyth's team. And today, Patrick Carpentier will post a surprising win for the unloved Reynard, as Derek put it earlier in the program. The first victory since the Long Beach race when Michael Andretti won in a Reynard before switching to the Lola. And a surprising win only because it was an unloved car. Not a surprising win that his players are forced on Patrick Carpanti or Fort Cosworth because they have been absolutely on the ball all weekend long here. They have shown the speed. He did it in qualifying when it mattered. He put himself on the front row besides the matter. He put himself in a position to challenge. And now here comes the payoff. With great driving and great pit work and strategy, Patrick Carpentier swings onto the start Pretty finish cool. straight away for the final time. Can and I a checkered flag is waved for the second time in his career in his 97th career Kart FedEx Championship Series race. Uh, don't you just love to see that type of celebration? Every member. There's the same line again coming over the top of the hill, but. He has had a very good car all day long, and that physically makes it much easier on the driver. Mind you, Tony Canan didn't look too bad, did he? No, but Max Pappas, I thought, did. I'm not sure he didn't have a cold coming in. He sounded hoarse, but he also looked fairly yeah. whipped when he got out of the car, and he is very fit. Yeah, Max was pretty rough earlier. White, white flag waves, one lap to go around this 2.25 mile, 13 turn road course. That has definitely taken its toll today, but not on this man. It would appear as Patrick Carpentier has dominated this race from pole position. Call it the best race of his career thus far. Uh, and, and this is domination. I mean, right from the first practice session on Friday, he has been on top of the charts here. Christian Fittipaldi, you see him top of the screen there. Here's the break zone where Tomato went off earlier on. But he has had the measure of sheer speed on the whole field all day long. Once more through the S's and the crowd beginning to come to its feet and applaud him as he does so. Up through turn eight and nine. Oh, when we go to Montreal in a couple of weeks time, <laughs> what a backdrop this is. Two race wins by the Canadian team, both by this man, Patrick Carpentier. And he is from Quebec in Canada. So you can imagine what it's going to be like when a French Canadian comes home to Montreal to race the champ cars. He's in his contract year. He could not have given more convincing proof that he is one of the heavy hitters in card. Victory for Patrick Carpentier, his third in his career, the second for the Reynard Ford combination. And he closes to just 27 points behind Cristiano Damata for the championship as Damata unofficially will come home in 13th place, one spot outside the championship points paying position. Okay, here's Sebastian Bourdais. So right now there are very, very good championship points available to Bruno Junquera if he just drives it home in second. 
to have a great summer of racing here on the Champ Car Series. The Creek's wife, Last Anit. lap, Pat. That's fine. Nice and smooth. One lap to go. An enormous contingent of Canadian journalists follow every round of the championship. Follow the exploits of this man, Alex Tagliani, Paul Tracy. All Canadian drivers sponsored by Players, a tobacco brand in Canada. Down to 0.77 seconds. There's the and dirt there's one the more time for Carpentier. That just shows you when a guy's in a zone like this, this is a car 750 horsepower. The tires are changing a little bit. The track changes a little bit. Drifts it to within literally an inch of the same spot every single lap. I mentioned players because they've done a great deal to support young Canadian racing drivers in the four decades or so they've been sponsoring professional motorsports. And with the evolution of tobacco sponsorship here in America and abroad, they may not be around for a long time in the future. This is a farewell tour for, for players, basically. And if this man, Patrick Carpentier, can hold on, it'll be the fourth win for players in 03. Three of them from Paul Tracy, and now one from Patrick Carpentier, the fourth different winner in seven rounds in the Champ Car Series this year. And there are hugs all around in the Forsyth crew pits. Carpentier just putting on a clinic here today. Started on the outside pole alongside Sebastian Bourdais. Bourdais and Tracy, who lined up behind him, got caught up in an early incident. Bourdais's been in trouble on pit road two separate times. Carpentier settled back in the third spot early and then second. And Tracy had problems. He took over and he has led the rest of the way. White flag in the air. J.D. Wilbur showing the field one to go. And Carpentier will listen and see. Got a huge lead, okay? Nice and conservative. Is that the last lap? Or we still got two. Last lap, last lap. The reason he's asking is Pat knows this is supposed to be an 80-lap race. He's wondering why they gave him the white flag on lap 78. I'm wondering the same thing myself. Oh, never out of time. Out of time. Carpentier makes it up the hill, headed toward the corkscrew one final time here today at Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca. And he has backed down a 114.5 last time around. So it'll be the third win of the season for the Indec Forsyth Racing Squad. Somebody put a tire off. Mazzucani big off through the dirt. Nearly caught the leader. What a way to have your day end on the final trip around with a huge lead. Just avoids Mazzucani. Carpentier off turn 11. Headed toward the checkered flag. It's a good flag, Carpentier. Baby. We're going to do it. Yeah. Carpentier wins the Champ Car World Series event for the fifth consecutive season, second straight year at Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca. And for Dale Coyne's team, Oriol Serbia heads home in third spot. And it'll be the first time in eight seasons that a Dale Coyne car has made the podium. Roberto Moreno turned the trick at Michigan in 1996. So for Dale Coyne and his bunch, a terrific day here at Mazda.